Let's start our class today. Um, my name is Beatrice. I am from Italy and I'm going to be your Italian teacher for today. I'm an Italian and Spanish tutor with uh, Take Lessons. I really, really enjoy uh, tutoring and it's really fun for me. It's fun for me to share my language and my culture and I'm always uh, very happy to see that there are so many people that want to uh, learn uh, my language. Okay. So let's start our class. Uh, first of all, I, I would like to give you an introduction, give you a, a, like a brief review about uh, what we're going to do today. I think it's always nice to know how you're going to spend the, the rest of the class. It, it's going to be like about 45 minutes to an hour and it's going to be divided in, in four parts. The first part is going to be why uh, study Italian and then the second part is going to be sound like an Italian. We're going to learn the Italian alf alphabet, uh, uh, pronunciation and phonetics. Then the third part, we're going to learn how to speak like an Italian and I'm going to teach you some uh, Italian words and, uh, and phrases. And then finally, we're going to have an overview of very basic Italian grammar. So this class is just like a beginner's class. I want to incorporate uh, uh, more or less all the things uh, uh, that you need to you know, know if uh, Italian is the right language for you and if you want to learn and just have an idea of what it will take. So as I just mentioned, our class is going to be divided in four parts. Why start Italian? Sound like an Italian? Speak like an Italian and write like an Italian. Why study Italian? In my opinion, there are four reasons why you should study Italian. And the first one is that Italian is easy. And I'm not the one saying it. It's the Foreign Service Institute. They have this chart that goes from one to five. One is the easiest and five is the hardest. And Italy, Italian is on their scale rated as a difficult one. So according to the Foreign Service Institute, it will take an average uh, 23 to 25 weeks to become proficient in Italian, which if you think it's not a lot, a, a lot of time. So yeah, reason number one, it's easy. Of course, it has its challenges because uh, especially grammar is uh, very diff different than English, but uh, it's definitely a language that the sounds and the pronunciation and, the, and you know, also the alphabet is not that different from, uh, you know, the English one. The second reason is uh, to get the most out of your Italian trip. I used to work in the travel industry before becoming uh, an instructor. Everyone wants to visit Italy at some point in their life and I found that beautiful and you should. If you have never been there, you definitely should plan your trip there. You can absolutely travel and all Italy with English, knowing a few words, knowing, have been, you know, like knowing some words in Italian will make that trip definitely like uh, better. Italians love when uh, a foreign trying to speak Italian. They absolutely love it. They are not those people that you're going to try to speak Italian and they're going to answer in English. No, they're going to absolutely love the fact that you're trying and it will allow you to have, uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, a more authentic experience. Of course, with English, you can go everywhere in Italy. You know, if you go more off the beaten path, you might find, you know, very small towns, uh, you might not be able to communicate to everyone in English, but believe me, with a little bit of hand gesture and a little bit of English and a little bit of Italian, you will get around just fine. The third uh, reason connects more or less with the first one that I was mentioning before, and it's because uh, English and Italian are both uh, like, uh, they both come, uh, Italian comes from Latin, and English uh, uh, shares 60% uh, of the vocabulary of English come from Latin. So by learning Italian, you can actually actually learn a lot of words in English that are so similar to Italian that sometimes is very surprising. Fourth reason, it's Italian opens a world of culture to you. While you know you can experience Italian art and culture even if you are, if you do not speak Italian, of course, if you do speak Italian, you will be able to, you know, have access to our beautiful culture in a different way. So for me, language is not just a language, but it's also culture. Through the language, you learn the culture of um, a country. You know, we have, you know, amazing art, like uh, the, I was checking that out yesterday and UNESCO says that 60% of art uh, is in Italy. So that 
uh, is amazing. And, you know, knowing some Italian, when uh, you get to know, you know, you go to museums and art installation, it will, you know, just make the, the, the experience a little bit different and, uh, and enrich that for you. But it's not just art, we have fashion, food, wine, I mean, you name it. We have so many wonderful things that uh, if you know a little bit of Italian will be even you know probably more fun uh, to learn fifth uh, reason which is a bonus one it uh, doesn't belong just to Italian but learning a language it's fun learning a language it's fun and it's very rewarding I think it's a great way to spend your time and just uh, like something nice to do and something great uh, a great way to spend your time sound like an Italian so the first thing when you learn a new language is take a look at your alphabet and try to understand if there are similarities with yours, how the, these letters sound, if uh, your language uh, shares the same letters or not. I mean, that is like a very first basic thing to do. As you can see here, uh, the Italian alphabet has 21 letters. We have five vowels, vocali, A, A, E, O, U, and then all the other letters are called consonanti. Then at the bottom line, in the, in the different color, you see what we call lettere internazionali. So lettere internazionali are, a, they do not officially belong to the Italian language, but we do need them because they are, they, those are the words that are used uh, in foreign words that we have in our vocabulary. So most of them are like, you know, English words. So of course we need to list them, but they do not belong to the official alphabet. So now I am going to read the alphabet for you. Pay attention and try to hear the, the similarities with uh, uh, the English alphabet. Okay, so let's start. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, Z. So these are the, the official one, the 21 that we have in our official alphabet. And then the lettere straniere are Ilunga, K, W, X, and Y. Okay, I'm going to spell some words, some three Italian words for you. So just grab pen and paper. We are gonna do like three words. First word, A, M, O, R, E. Okay, this is the first word. I'm gonna repeat it one more time. A, M, O, R, E. Okay. Okay. Yes, very good. That was amore. So let's go to the next word. Okay. R, O, S, A. I'm going to repeat that for you. R, O, S, A. Okay, let's see. Rosa. Very good. The last word. Okay, let's ready. C I A O. I'm going to repeat that one more time. C I A O. Okay. E, this is ciao. Is C so only the C letter, I, A, O, ciao. All right, okay guys, so, you know, Learning the alphabet is gonna take a little bit of time and my suggestion is uh, in front of the mirror, take your alphabet uh, chart and, you know, and just keep practicing. A, B, C, D, A, and so on. I guarantee you that uh, with a little bit of, um, a, of practice, you're going to master it. And it's very important because the alphabet, it's very important for you for spelling reasons. For example, if you don't, do not know how to say something, uh, you can ask, uh, come si scrive? 
So for example, someone is talking, uh, you, are, you are in your trip to Italy, someone is giving you some information, but you do not understand what they are saying. So you can just ask the person to spell that for you and you will say, come si scrive? Okay, so let's move to la pronuncia, the pronunciation. So I'm gonna give you a few tips about Italian pronunciation. And uh, you know, this part here sounds, looks like a lot of theory, but then we'll have a small test to do together to see how well, uh, and how well I explained this to you and uh, how you learned it, okay? So the first thing to know is that Italian words end with a vowel, except for words that are foreign. Like, uh, and, and that's a way that you can understand if a word belongs to the Italian vocabulary or not. So we, we borrow a lot of words. I'm gonna be honest with you like, and here you have some example, we have bar, film, yogurt, sport, hotel. So all these words and uh, with a consonant, Italian words and with a vowel. So that is the first uh, thing to know. Second, which is very important, is the vowels and the diphthongs are clearly articulated. So that means that when you say, you pronounce a word, you have to pronounce every single vowel. So you know that sometimes in English, you spell a word in a way, but you do not pronounce all the letters in that word. In, in Italian, vowel is there, you need to pronounce it. I'm gonna like read these words for you so you can understand that we are pronouncing every single letter in it. So it's donna, uomo, mani, orecchie. And then noioso, you see, I'm pronouncing all the vowels, which there are many in this one. Noioso, piede, gioco, Europa. So this is uh, um, Europa, or for example, Euro, is a word that uh, I know that sometimes for like people that are learning Italian, it become, it's difficult because you will say Euro. No, if it's the, we know we have the A and the U, so you have to pronounce them both. Europa, Euro. Okay? Good. So let's move to the next slide. Here is about uh, uh, where to put uh, the stress on, on the words. Like, so most Italian words stress the next to the last syllable. And we have, for example, burattino, lavorare. For example, and here you see that the letter that we have to stress is the one that I put in bold, is the E in burattino. Burattino, lavorare. So you, you hear like the stress goes there. So this is like most of the, the words have the stress uh, the next to the last syllable. However, there are many exceptions. In order to learn uh, the pronunciation, you have uh, you know, to listen, memorize, practice, use some tools like, for example, Google, tra Google Translation. I am not very fond of it uh, for translation purposes because some, many times the translation are are not very accurate, but it's a great tool to use when you are uncertain about how to pronounce a word. So for example, we have the word leggere. If you put leggere in a Google Translate and you click to hear the pronunciation, they will say leggere. So you will know that it's not leggere, but it's leggere. Okay, when you learn a language, there are some rules. And as I said, most of the words are going to stress the next to the last syllable. However, Italian has a lot of exceptions. I can guarantee you that after a while that you, you know, when you start studying Italian, my suggestion is always like, even if you don't understand it right away, because of course it takes a little bit of time, you know, listen music, uh, try to listen to podcasts, uh, try to watch some YouTube videos, even if you don't understand everything, I just think that uh, it's important to you know, get to used to the sound. With time, you will uh, get all these accents right. Next accent rule is about the, the words that the final, uh, the, we, we have some words that have like a graphic accent, like caffè, città, così, più. And this graphic accent is gonna be quite easy because you actually know where the stress goes. And we have many words, like in this case, I put caffè and città, but we have più, that means more, così, which means so, and, and many more. So those are quite like easier because you see the accent and you know uh, that the stress needs to go in the final vowel. Let's move to the next slide. Double consonants. So Italian has uh, a lot of doubles. You must pronounce them. And so when you pronounce them, just extend the sound while holding the breath for a moment. I know that it sounds difficult, but it's not. So the first example, we have ballare, correre. So the one that probably is going to be a little bit more challenging is a double R because you have to learn how to roll the R's, but it will come with practice. So we have ballare, 
correre. Good. Double consonants are very important because they differentiate words. For example, cane, canne. Cane is dog, canne is read. It's important how you pronounce them and it's important how you spell them because you can actually mean different words. And we have many of them that, for example, rosa, that uh, you guys spelled before when we were doing the exercise about uh, the alphabet, is different than rosa, which is pink. Ro rosa and rosa. Okay, good. Let's move to the next slide. We're gonna start, uh, this is our first slide about phonetics. We are gonna learn the phonetics of two letters and one sound. First one is la lettera C. In Italian, the, la lettera C can have a sweet sound or a hard sound. Suono dolce o suono duro. So, suono dolce sounds like a C, and it's produced when we have an, a la C followed by a E, o C and E. For example, C and E is C. Cinese. So, and as you can hear, it's ch, cinese. C and A is C, e diventa cento, cento. Then we have ciao, cioccolato, ciuffo. I'm going to repeat them one more time. Cinese, cento, ciao, cioccolato, ciuffo. And if you hear, it's like the sound is like, you know, like this graphic that you guys see here, ch. It's like a T, S, more or less, okay? So, CH. And this is the sweet sound. When the C is followed by any other letter, then the sound, it becomes hard. and becomes like a K. K. So, we're going to have casa, colla, cucina, classe, croce, chiave, anche. So, please note that these last two here, um, have an H. So it's uh, C più H I diventa chi, C più H E diventa che. So chi and che, we do not pronounce the H, but the H is there, so the sound becomes like chi, che, so chiave anche. Okay? Good. So one more time, suono dolce, dolce, C, suono duro, C. Now, I'm going to test you. <laughs> Let's see if you guys remember, if you guys can tell me where these words go. In, uh, are they going to go in the list of uh, suono dolce or suono duro? So I'm going to pronounce them to you. You can just like take a pen and, and paper, write them down, and then you will, I will give you the, uh, the correct answer and you will know if you got it right or wrong. So, first word, cinque. Cinque. So where does cinque goes? Second word, cuoco. 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 Third is luce. Luce. Then we have camera. Camera. We have bicchiere, bicchiere, faccia, faccia. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few seconds so you can review the words and decide if they go in the sweet sounds or in the hard sound. I'm going to repeat them one more time. Cinque, cuoco, luce, camera, bicchiere, faccia. So if you wrote cinque, luce and faccia in the sweet sound, that is correct. Luce, faccia and cinque have that ts, ch kind of sound and it's because they are, there is the c plus i or e. And then the other three words, cuoco, camera and bicchiere have the k sound, so a harder sound. Okay, good. Let's move to the next letter, la lettera G. La lettera G, even here, divides into suono dolce and suono duro. And we have the same rule as before. G più E, G più E is suono dolce, G più every other letter is a suono duro. So let's he try to hear the suono dolce. We have ginocchio, gelato, giacca, 
giornale giusto. So the, the sound is like j. Ok? I'm going to repeat them one more time. Ginocchio, gelato, giacca, giornale, giusto. Ok, so now let's try to hear the sound of uh, il suono duro. Il suono duro is like g. So we have the sweet one that is g and the hard sound that is g. And it's going to be gatto, gonna, guanti, inglese, gru. And then we have here again, when we add the H, we do not pronounce it, but it's going to become ghiaccio, spaghetti. Ok? Ghiaccio, spaghetti. Again, we have the suono dolce, G, and the suono duro, G. Then the letter G has other two different sounds. One of these, it's uh, the famous gli. That I know that it's a little bit difficult to pronounce, but it's, uh, it's in many Italian words. It's also actually gli is also one of our articles, of our articoli determinativi. So the suono dolce gli, it's, uh, you know, you have just to practice and repeat it many times. It sounds like this. Figli, famiglia, moglie, luglio. Figli, famiglia, moglie, luglio. And then we have a suono duro that is produced with the lettera G and N. And it becomes bagni, lavagna, lasagne, giugno. Bagni, lavagna, lasagne, Junior. Okay, so now let's test. I'm going to read uh, as before these uh, words and you will decide if they go in the suono dolce or suono duro. Okay, so alghe, 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 giallo, giallo, giallo. Then we have Gnocchi, 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 pagina, pagina, biglietto, biglietto, and gamba, gamba. Ok, so if you brought giallo, pagina, and biglietto in the sweet uh, suono dolce column, that's correct. And the other three, alghe, gnocchi, and gamba, are part of the suono duro. Our last sound of today, so again, we have uh, a suono dolce and suono duro. Suono dolce is follow the same uh, rule, S-C-P-U-E, S-C-P-U-E, is sh, so is she and she. Sharpa, pesce. Sharpa, Pesce, ok? And the suono duro is uh, sc and it's gonna be scarpa, scopa, scuola, scrivere, maschio, mosche. One more time. Scarpa, scopa, scuola, scrivere, maschio, mosche. Again, remember the age we do not hear. We do not hear when we, when we speak. And then the suono dolce is she and she. Okay? Good. Let's test our sound sk, our last sound of our uh, second part for today. We have sceriffo, schiaffo, scuro, scivolo, muscolo, ascensore. So decide where these words go. I'm going to repeat them one more time. Sceriffo, schiaffo, scuro, scivolo, muscolo, ascensore. Ok, so if uh, you put sceriffo, scivolo e ascensore in the sweet sound column, that's correct. And then schiaffo, scuro e muscolo are hard sound, suono duro, that sound like sk. Ok, so we just uh, finished our second part that was about uh, how to sound like an Italian, so we learned the alphabet and a few rules about uh, pronunciation and some phonetics. So now we are going to put those the things that we learn into good use because we are going to try to read and learn some uh, Italian words. 
So when I saw this image, I couldn't resist and I had to use it because uh, we Italians are always uh, made fun because we use our hands a lot. And I'm, you know, we have been together for half an hour already. And I'm sure that you guys have seen me using my hands many times. So let's now let's uh, try to learn a few essential basic uh, sentences and phrases that you can use uh, as you know a first step of learning Italian. So parole essenziali, essential words. So I'm going to read them to you. We're, I'm gonna, some of them will require some comment, and then right after these, uh, you're going to have a test. So try to memorize them. Okay. So first is C, si, yes. No, which is the same. Then we have va bene. We also say okay. Uh, per favore, grazie, prego, e mi dispiace. A special comment about grazie. As I was saying before, we do pronounce all the vowels in the word. So it's going to be grazie. No grazie, but grazie. Okay? Good. I'm going to read them one more time. Sì, si, no, va bene, per favore, grazie, prego, mi dispiace. Okay, and now I would like you to tell me how do you say thank you in Italian, all right, and sorry. So let's start with the first one. Come si dice thank you in Italiano? Come si dice? Come si dice? Si dice? Grazie. Grazie. Come si dice all right? How do you guys say all right in Italian? You have two ways of saying it, and one is va bene or okay, like in English. And how do you say sorry? How do you say sorry? Come si dice? Si dice? Mi dispiace. Okay. So let's move to the greeting. So we just learned like a very few essential words to say yes, no, thank you, I'm sorry. Now let's learn some greetings. So the first three we have are is buongiorno, buonasera e buonanotte. Buongiorno, I'm pretty sure you guys already know this, and buongiorno is a very used greeting that we use up until noon, up, up until 12. After 12, our option could be buonasera or buon pomeriggio. Buon pomeriggio, I didn't write it here because it's not really used. Usually, we always say buonasera. Right after 12 p.m., we start saying buonasera. But just know that you can also hear people saying buon pomeriggio, but it's a little bit more less used than buonasera. So buonasera is going to be used, you know, right after 12. You will say buonasera, which means afternoon, but also evening. And then buonanotte. Buonanotte is used not as the same way that is used in English. We say buonanotte when you know that someone is actually going to sleep. You know that we are together, we are in like my house and you're my, my guest and uh, we are saying goodbye for the night and you, and you know that I'm going to sleep. You say buonanotte Beatrice. Okay. Then we have ciao, which is very popular. Everybody knows ciao. And now you also know how to pronounce it well because it's cha. We just learn it and it's like the sweet sound. And it's used when you arrive or when we leave, or when you leave. So it's used as hello and goodbye. But keep in mind that ciao is very informal. We have a salve that is a little bit more formal. So for example, if you're entering a store, uh, you would not say ciao, you would say salve or buongiorno, buonasera. You do not say ciao if you, for example, enter a store. And uh, a, when you leave, you can say arrivederci. Arrivederci is a little bit, again, it's like salve, it's a little bit more formal. So if you are saying goodbye to a friend, you would not say arrivederci, you would just say ciao. Okay? And then we have a dopo, a presto, and a domani. A dopo, a presto, and a domani. Let's test your memory. Come si dice? How do you say good night? Come si dice good night? Come si dice good night? Si dice buonanotte. Yes, buonanotte. Come si dice good morning? This one I'm sure you guys know. Come si dice? Si dice buongiorno. 
and uh, come si dice finally uh, goodbye. We said that we have two ways of saying it, one that is more formal and one that is very informal. And so come si dice goodbye, we can say arrivederci or we can say ciao. All right. Now let's move to asking what is your name? So, you know, we're like trying to learn vocabulary that will be useful for our first conversation with someone, our first meeting with someone in Italian. So, come ti chiami? It means uh, what's your name? Literally means uh, how do you call yourself? But the translation is what's your name? Come ti chiami? And you answer io mi chiamo and then your name. And then, you know, here there, is, there are a lot of examples of the sound that we were learning before, that is the hard sound of the chi, a come, k, ti chiami, chiami, okay? So here we can practice what we learned before. Come ti chiami. And then the answer is io mi chiamo. And then your name. Then you can answer to that. Uh, if you want to say nice to meet you, you can say piacere di conoscerti. And we also have a smaller, uh, like a shorter version, which is just piacere. So you can either say piacere di conoscerti or piacere. Then we have di dove sei, where are you from? And you answer, io sono italiana, I'm Italian. And then uh, if you want to keep the conversation going, you can learn and use e tu, and you. Okay, how do you say these words in Italian? Nice to meet you. We just saw that there is a longer version and a shorter version. So how do you say nice to meet you? You say piacere di conoscerti or just piacere. How do you say I'm Italian? How do you say it? You say io sono italiana. Finally, how do you say e tu? How do you use this uh, question to keep the conversation going? You say E tu. Good. This is our final slide about the, the, our vocabulary part and we are about to move uh, after this, we're going to move to our final part, which is like a, a general grammar. So, come stai? How are you? So, you know, we learn uh, how to say yes and no, thank you, please. We learn how to greet someone. We learn how to ask and reply to uh, what's your name. And now let's learn how to say how are you? So again, we have uh, our first question is come stai? How are you? Again, remember the sound is C-O, co, it's a hard sound, come stai? And you can answer, sto bene, I'm good. Sto molto bene, I'm very good. Sto abbastanza bene, I'm pretty well. Sto male, I'm bad. And again, to keep the conversation going and be polite, and you, e tu. Let's repeat that one more time. Come stai? Sto bene? Sto molto bene? Sto abbastanza bene? Sto male? E tu? Good. So let's uh, test your memory once again. Come si dice? How do you say? Come si dice? How are you? Si dice? Come stai? Come stai? Come si dice? How do you say? I'm very good. Si dice, sta molto bene. And how do you say, I'm bad, I'm feeling bad. How do you say that? You say, sto male. Okay. So do you guys have, a, if you don't, if you have any question, let me know. We're just going to move to the next and final part, which is grammar. Write like an Italian. So Italian grammar, it's a little bit difficult, but just because it has a lot of rules and it's a, a little bit more complicated than the English one. We have a lot of tenses, we have a lot of rules and a lot of exceptions, but some effort and studying and doing a lot of exercises, you can absolutely master it. So today, what I wanted to go to introduce you is like uh, three parts of a word that are very important. The pronome personale, the subject pronouns, verbo essere, which is the to be, and then nouns. So I would like you to just, you know, I wanted just to introduce you to these three, um, these three parts of a sentence, of an Italian sentence. Okay, so we are going to review and learn these three parts of, this, of the Italian sentence. Subject pronoun, 
verbo essere and nouns. I, of course, in this sentence, io sono uno studente, we have an article, but that is going to be for another lesson. Okay, so let's start with the pronome personale soggetto, the subject pronouns. We have io, tu, lui, lei, which are the singular one. I, you, he, she is io, tu, lui, lei. Remember, lui, we have to pronounce all the vowels, lei. Then we have the plural ones. Noi, voi, loro. Noi, voi, loro. So once again, io, tu, lui, lei, noi, voi, loro. So the Italian, the subject pronoun is not necessary. For example, we can say parlo italiano and we can say io parlo italiano. So we, why do we do not need the subject pronoun? We do not need it because Italian verbs have a specific ending for every single uh, person. For, so there is going to be an ending for io, an ending for tu, an ending for voi and an ending for loro we understand who is speaking, so who is the subject of that uh, uh, verb because of the ending of that verb, okay? In English, we do not, we cannot have a verb without the subject pronoun because otherwise we do not understand who is doing the action. For example, in the present tense in English, we added the S at the third person singular, but all the other persons are the same. So it's gonna be I speak, you speak, she speaks. So if we do not put uh, you or I before speak, we do not know who is doing the action. In Italian, it's not the case. So I just want you guys to know that you can find uh, sentences where you have the subject pronoun and sentences where you do not have. An Italian speaker will usually do not add the, the pronoun and that is because it's kind of redundant but you will use it when it comes to uh, you know being specific about the subject so you want to underline who did the action so you will say io parlo italiano okay so let's move to our next part which is il verbo essere so il verbo essere is an irregular verb and it means to be to exist and if uses are much like those uh, in english and the verb is io sono to say lui, lei, è, noi siamo, voi siete, loro sono. Once again, io sono, tu sei, lui, lei, è, noi siamo, voi siete, loro sono. As I said, this is an irregular verb. For example, you can see that uh, sono, it's a uh, this the same verb for io and loro, but of course you will understand who is doing the action by the context of the sentence. For example, if uh, it's a sentence that has more than a person like Luca e Laura sono amici, then you will understand that that sono, it's, it means they are, because we are like talking in, a, in plural. Okay, another information I wanted to give you about the, the verbo essere and all other verbs is that the negative is, is done by putting non before the verb. And the inter interrogative is just like done by adding uh, the question mark. So as you can see at the end of this slide, we have the affirmative sentence, which is uh, sei felice. The negative is non sei felice. And the interrogative is gonna be sei felice. Okay, our final part is going to be nouns. So Italian nouns, uh, there is a general rule that tells you that if a word ends in O, it's masculine, and if it ends in A, it's feminine. And here you can see also how you will do the plural of the masculine and the plural of the feminine. So if a word ends in O, for us it's masculine, and, I, and you can see in the chart it says ragazzo, plural becomes ragazzi. Quaderno, quaderni, bambino, bambini. So these are all masculine, singular, and masculine plural. If a word ends with a, then that word usually is feminine. So it's going to be ragazza, and becomes ragazza in plural. Penna, which becomes penne, plural. Chiesa, chiese. So the a becomes an a, e in the plural when it comes uh, for the feminine. So this is the general rule. But as I was saying before, Italian has a lot of exceptions. And we also have many uh, nouns that end with uh, E. 
which for you guys is E. And um, it, these words can be either masculine or feminine. And the only way, you know, the usual way to, learn, to know if it's masculine or feminine is going to be to check in a dictionary. And, uh, you know, you will need to know if that word is masculine or feminine because you will have to add, for example, you have the word giornale. You want to know if it's masculine or feminine because you will have to at some point add an article before that word. And if uh, it's masculine, it's going to be il giornale. If it's feminine, for example, chiave, it's going to be la chiave. And both uh, these words like, uh, are going to have their plural by adding una i, uh, i for you, giornali and chiavi. There are some ways to, detect, to understand if these words are masculine or feminine, and I listed them for you. For example, uh, words, nouns uh, ending tore, are, and ile are usually masculine, and uh, words that end in trice and zione are usually feminine. Are, Sione are always family and Trice are usually family. So, you know, there are many exceptions, but there is always a way, like some tips and tricks to learn if that word is masculine or feminine. All right. So guys, we ended our class for today. Thank you for being with us. I want to let you know that if you have any question, you can go to my Take Lesson profile and send me a question through the Ask We Teach a Question uh, feature. If you want to start learning Italian, you can definitely reach out to me through the Take Lesson profile and I will be happy to help you with uh, your Italian journey. Finally, I would like to thank Take Lessons for giving us the opportunity to meet today. Thanks again and hopefully I'll see you again.